Hello friends. So in the previous video, we had just concluded our discussion on the Shockley diode equation. We just introduced this particular equation. In this video, we will just understand the various conditions of forward bias, reverse bias, etc. With respect to this equation, we have seen the theory in great detail. But with respect to this equation, which is of our importance, what is the conditions? Before that, we'll just do a small recap on what we learnt on the graphs actually. So in the ideal case, in a diode. Uh, we even if the diode voltage is very 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 small negligible forward voltage should you give you a current flow diode current flow, right and if you apply a reverse voltage across the diode it should not conduct so that is the meaning of this guy so as you apply the reverse voltage that is vd is negative but you are not having any current value so for this any value of vd in this direction you don't have a current value but with even with a negligible zero amount of drop you are having a current flow. forward voltage will have current but in ideal case, it's not like I already told you. So it will be the graph will look like something like this. Okay. And then here you are having something which is called the graph will look like this. So this particular current value that is in the negative side, that is in the reverse bias condition, you call that as the uh, saturation current, reverse saturation current, or it is also called as the leakage current. We have seen that when we are discussing the physical aspects, they in reality, what is there? Then beyond a voltage which is called breakdown voltage, I told you the current will increase at a very high value even with small changes in voltage. So here I told you when all the covalent bonds within the crystal structure will break, it will attain the breakdown condition. Now one thing that you have to remember here is just to define all these terms. I thought of telling something else but I remembered something else. So this ID is the diode current. Okay. Is the reverse saturation current, the reverse saturation current, or it is also called as a leakage current. It's also called as the leakage current. Okay. Vd, the voltage across the diode, voltage across the diode, okay, with the anode positive with respect to cathode. The anode positive with respect to with respect to the cathode. That means Vd in this particular equation actually represents a forward voltage. Then n, what is this value of n? This n is an empirical constant. It is an empirical constant. Okay. It is also called as an emission constant. It is also called as an emission constant or it is also called as an ideality factor. Ideality factor. So, it is the value of this n uh, ranges from 1 to 2. So, for germanium n is equal to 1, for silicon n is equal to 2 and any other semiconductor usually the n is from 1.1 to 1.8. In the numericals usually they will give this value of n so you do not have to worry about that. Now, this uh, reverse saturation current I told you it is a very very small value in terms of micro amperes and nano amperes. So, roughly it is 10 power minus 6 to 10 power minus 15 amperes depending upon the uh, data sheet of the diode depending upon the manufacturer of the diode etc. Sorry Diwali celebrations has not completed here till now. So now Vt, what is Vt? Vt is called the thermal voltage. Vt is called the thermal voltage or Vt is equal to Kt divided by Q. In the earlier equation when we are looking all these things in the physical perspective, I did not uh, write Vt separately, I just directly used the value kt divided by q and kt divided by q you know what it is k is the boltzmann constant boltzmann constant in this video now we will just write all these terms i have written all these values so it is 1.3806 10 power minus 23 joules per kelvin q is the electronic charge electronic charge which you know very famous 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb and t is the absolute uh, temperature in the junction, absolute junction temperature in Kelvin, absolute junction temperature in Kelvin. So, these are the equations. Now, let us see this equation in terms of forward bias voltage. Okay. Now, you know that in the forward bias condition, forward bias condition, what will be the uh, voltage across the diode? That Vd will be greater than 0. Right? In the forward bias condition, Vd will be greater than 0. Now you solve the graph, when you plot the 
ID graph of the diode that is this is VD and this is ID. In the initial part when the voltage is small, when the applied diode voltage is small, you see that the current value is not very high. With the variation in the voltage, current value is not increasing significantly. But beyond a particular value, for example, let us take this value, even small values of small changes in VD will increase the value of ID tremendously. See here. See here. So if this particular value, this is VD, little I increase, the ID increase so much. Here it is not the case. For the same increase, you see, the ID value has not increased so much. Okay. So in the forward bias condition, in the forward bias condition, when VD value is less than a particular threshold value, that threshold value is called VTD. VTD. Beyond that threshold value only, you are getting high variation of current with small variation in VD. So when VD is less than this VTD now, VD less than VTD means this side, VD less than VTD, this side. Okay. The diode current the diode current is very small. The diode current is very small. Okay, But when Vd is greater than Vtd, Vd is greater than this threshold value, the diode is fully conducting. What does this mean? The diode has entered into its conduction mode or turn on condition. The diode is fully conducting. Okay, that is why it is conducting like this. That is why it becomes almost behaves like a conductor. Diode is fully conducted. Now, do not think that when I am telling diode is behaving like a conductor, the current carrying process is like a conductor. Now, I have told you, right? Diodes you are having the diffusion current is prominent. Okay. So, the diode is fully conducting, and usually this threshold value VTD is equal to 0.7 volt. Okay, with a standard value, and sometimes in numerical they will give specifically what is this VTD value. So, this VTD is called the threshold voltage. What it is called? It is called the threshold voltage. Okay. It is also called as the cut-in voltage. Okay. Or it is also called as the turn-on voltage. That is the voltage, minimum voltage required to turn on the diode. So these are the different names. Okay. So if you want a proper definition of threshold voltage, you can define it as the. It is the voltage. It is the voltage where a diode conducts fully. Where a diode Condex fully. Condex fully. Okay. So now we'll just uh, see a small numerical based on this, just to just so that you get a feel of all these values. Okay. okay. So for example, VD is equal to 0 0.1 volt. N is equal to one. VT is equal to 25.7. They are asking what is ID. So ID value is equal to IS into E power VD divided by N into VT minus one. So this IS value you don't know. Let us take it as IS itself. So it's E power 0.1 divided by n is 1 multiplied by 25.1 into 10 power minus 3. Don't forget to put that 10 power minus 3. So if you do this, you will get 47.96 into IS. What is the range of IS? IS is around 10 power minus. How much did I tell you? 10 power minus 9, right? Yeah, 10 power minus 6 to 10 power minus 15. IS ranges from 10 power minus 6 to 10 power minus 50. That means this ID value will be very, very low. ID is very, very low. Why is ID very, very low? I told you this VTD value is roughly 0.7 volt, right? It is roughly 0.7 volt and we are using only 0.1 volt. So where are we in this graph? We are in this portion of this graph. That is the current value is very, very small or negligible. Okay. Now for VDs, if VD is very much higher than VTD. If VD is very much higher than VTD. So the same equation if you take ID is equal to IS V power VD divided by N into VT minus 1. Now VD is a very significantly higher value. What will happen if you if you split this equation you get ID is equal to IS into V power E power VD divided by NVT minus IS. This IS value is negligible right it is 10 power minus 6 10 power minus 5. So when VD is greater than VTD, again sorry for Diwali. So, V ID is equal to IS into E power VD divided by NVT. So, you can roughly use this equation when VD is uh, significantly higher than this VTD value. Okay. In fact, uh, now we will go for the reverse bias region. Okay. The same graph we will use for reverse bias region. Same equation you will use for 
reverse bias region. So, what was the reverse bias region in terms of equation Vd will be less than 0. Right? When Vd is less than 0, you are telling that it is reverse bias condition. Right? So, again we will take the equation Id is equal to Is into e power Vd divided by Nvt minus 1. Right? So, when Vd is less than 0, Vd is negative. Vd is negative. Right? Now, when Vd is negative, this e power minus Vd divided by Nvt also will become negative. Right? Ed, e divided by minus Vd divided by Nvt also will be negative. Now, when the magnitude of Vd, I am telling about magnitude, Vd is a negative value, but now I am telling about magnitude. When Vd value, magnitude of Vd is very much higher than Vt. That means, this magnitude of this Vt, okay, ma only magnitude, but in the negative side. When the magnitude of Vd is much less than Vt, naturally what will happen, this e power minus term will be very, very small. So, for example, Vt is some 25.7 millivolts and Vd, I am applying some minus 5 volts. Okay. This is a, in terms of negative sign, it might be lesser, but we are talking about magnitudes here. Okay. So, if you substitute that value here, you will find that Id, this e power minus term you can neglect because Vd is negative. So, Id is roughly equal to minus Is because this e, Is into e power minus Vd divided by into you can neglect. So, you will be left with minus Is. Okay. So, this is the thing here. You saw that in the graph, right? You saw that this value is almost constant, right? Till the breakdown value, this value is almost constant. So, whatever value you are giving in the negative direction, the leakage current or the diode current under reverse bias condition is almost constant. And we saw that in the physical perspective also. That time also I told you that the reverse saturation current is a constant value because the availability of minority carriers is a temperature dependent phenomenon. It is a few only are available. So, I told you that value is a constant value. But now you have seen with respect to equation also, this is same. Okay. So, this shows that, this shows that the current in the diode, the current in the diode, in the reverse direction, the reverse direction is constant, reverse direction is constant and equal to and equal to Is, okay. this value is equal to Is, of course, with the negative side. Now, what was the third region of that graph? The third region was the breakdown region. So, we will take down that breakdown region. Okay. So, especially in power uh, diodes, we are not talking about signal diodes, so power diodes, when the reverse voltages are very high, like for example, greater than 1000 volts and it exceeds into a such high voltage that all the covalent bonds of the diodes are uh, breaking, that voltage is called reverse uh, breakdown voltage and beyond that voltage, even a small change in that voltage value the current will increase to significantly higher value. That is what you see here. Once the breakdown reaches, once the breakdown reaches, even for small changes in voltage, the current change will be very, very high. Okay, So, that is the breakdown region. So, I will just write down that point here. When reverse voltages, now this is in the reverse condition, okay. when reverse voltages are high, that is uh, greater than 1000 volts and exceeds a voltage and exceeds a voltage called reverse breakdown voltage, reverse breakdown voltage or it is also called as VBR, VBR even with a small voltage, even with a small change in voltage, change in voltage, uh, specifically we will put as reverse, small change in reverse voltage beyond VBR, okay, the reverse current rises rapidly. Okay, because I told you in the reverse bias condition, there is a reverse current. The reverse current rises rapidly. Now, the question is, will, get, will the diode get damaged? So, that is a question which you can see from the uh, data sheet of the uh, diode. For example, some diodes while might have a reverse current rating. So, if the power dissipation is within that scope, that scope of the data sheet, then it will not get damaged. But if it is much higher, the diode will surely get damaged. Okay. So, the diode 
may not be damaged may not be damaged if the power dissipation if the power dissipation power dissipation is within a safe level is within a safe level as per the manufacturer data sheet that is why you have to always see manufacturer data sheets see one thing that uh, if any college students are watching this videos whenever you see a device just google for a manufacturer data sheets you will see how these devices are rated etc as per my uh, belief is that all the teachers also should show when they were they are teaching a diode a transformer a dc motor etc they should show the data sheet so that you understand the safe operating level uh, forward current reverse saturation current then the tr reverse recovery time all these things are very important for a diode so uh, after this video just google uh, data sheet space power diodes you will get so many uh, data sheets so just go through whatever i am telling here go let us see uh, the what is the reverse current you can see that then then you can see the breakdown voltage you can see the forward voltage there are so many things that you can see in a manufacturer data sheet okay so that i want you to go and google we'll do a simple numerical now when vd is equal to 1.2 volts id is equal to 300 amperes n is equal to 2 vt is equal to 25.7 millivolt find the value of is simple it numerical so id is equal to is into e power vd divided by nvt minus 1 just directly substitute here so id is given as 300 amperes so that is equal to is into e power uh, vd is how much vd is given as 1.2 volt okay so this is in the forward bias condition uh, that is why you see the current value is also quite high divided by n is 2 multiplied by vt vt is 25.7 millivolt 10 power minus 3 in power. so if you find the value of is here you will get it as 2.177 10 power minus 8 amperes see how much small this saturation current is okay so this are the conditions that you have to i told you it is 10 power minus 6 to 10 power minus 15 so in this video what we have seen whatever physical conditions that we have seen in the forward bias condition reverse bias condition etc that we have seen in this important equation which is called the shockley equation e power vd divided by nvt minus 1 this equation should be in the fingertips of all of you okay so till i see in the next video it's me varun signing off the tomorrow's in the video or in the next video we'll see about the reverse recovery characteristics of the diode okay so i hope all of you are safe uh, till i see in the next video is me varun signing off and have a great day thank you now that the video is over please stay with me for 30 more seconds now the vision of this channel is to create a repository of good quality videos with crystal clear explanation regarding various topics related to electrical engineering now if you want to help me spread the word Please share this video with anyone interested in these topics. The second thing is that for me education is a two way process. Therefore, if you have any doubts or suggestions regarding any of the videos or regarding the channel, please put them in the comments below. We can have a healthy discussion and that way we can build a strong community of electrical engineers. So that's it for today's video. So till I see you in the next time, it's me Varun signing off and have a great day. Thank you.